Often, the success of a theme park trip can be determined by the number of rides and roller coasters you get to experience. This could mean riding as many attractions as possible, or finally getting on one roller coaster you've been meaning to ride for ages. People who visit theme parks regularly, like me, pride themselves in figuring out how to maximize the number of attractions we can ride in one day. That means coming up with some sort of game plan, a rough schedule or itinerary which we can use during our visit. For Alton Towers, the UK's biggest theme park, that's especially important. Alton Towers is a large collection of rides, but what's more difficult is that these are spread out across the park's large site. If you want to ride the Smiler, then Nemesis, be ready to walk 15 minutes across the whole width of the theme park itself. Because of this, theme park nerds boast about their strategy to conquer Alton Towers, a strategy which allows them to ride all seven of the park's major roller coasters in the shortest time possible. This got me thinking though, there are so many different routes to take around the park, mathematically, one of them has to be the fastest. So let's find out which one that is. Sadly, it's not that easy. First, we need some data. Specifically, we need to know how long the queues are for each major roller coaster at various points throughout the day. That way, for example, we can estimate it would take someone 60 minutes to queue for the Smiler at 1pm. As a longtime user of QTimes.com, a website which tracks queue times for a whole multitude of parks across the world, I asked whether I could borrow some of their data for Alton Towers, to which they replied, yes, fantastic start. Queue times aren't the only data we need though. We also need to create a map of Alton Towers which gives estimates as to how long it takes to walk between all seven roller coasters. For example, it takes roughly seven minutes to walk from the Smiler to Rita and vice versa. With all of this data, we'd be able to predict a. how long it would take someone to queue for a particular roller coaster at any point during their day and b. the time it would take someone to walk between rides. So, how do you then determine the fastest way to ride all seven roller coasters? You brute force it, of course. That means producing a way of calculating the total queue plus walking time for every single combination of riding all seven rides, which in our case is 5,040 unique combinations. Easy. Well, easy for someone who knows Python a little bit better than I do. Fortunately, my friend Ed is smart, and he quickly wrote a piece of code to analyze all 5,040 permutations. During the testing phases, we realized we needed to add another one or two features. The first thing was that riding roller coasters isn't an instantaneous event. After you finish queuing, you'll spend several minutes boarding, riding, and then leaving the roller coaster itself. So, to account for all of that extra time, we added an additional 10 minutes to the queue time for all rides. Secondly, computer programs don't need to eat lunch, but sadly as humans, we do. So we added a 45 minute lunch break, which the code would decide for you as long as it's after 12 p.m. So with the code set up and the data ready to go, we hit run. Imagine you've just rocked up to the turnstile to Alton Towers. It's a busy day, perhaps a weekend, and the time is currently exactly 10 a.m. Let's start the clock. The first thing to do is begin a seven minute walk to oblivion. There, you'll join the one minute queue, allowing you to leave the ride at 10.18. Next, you'll complete another seven minute walk over to Rita, which currently has a 10 minute queue. After that, you'll join the 32 minute long queue of 13. Counterintuitively, it's time to head back over to X Sector for a ride on the Smiler. You'll join the 74 minute long queue at 11.34, meaning you'll leave the ride at 12.58, just in time for some lunch. Where you eat is entirely up to you, but use the 45 minutes wisely. Assuming you eat next to the Smiler, you'll have an additional 7 minutes to walk to Wicker Man. There, you'll join the 56 minute queue at 13.51. Two more rides to go. Next on the agenda is a 10 minute walk over to Forbidden Forest, which obviously means a ride on Nemesis at exactly 15.07. A 36 minute queue later allows you to move on to your final roller coaster. Join Galactica's 47 minute queue at 1553 and savor your successful speedrun of Alton Towers. After all that, you've ridden all seven roller coasters in a record time of six hours and 50 minutes. Amazing, right? Mm, kind of. It's extremely unlikely you'll be able to follow this itinerary to the exact minute. However, the rough order should be one of the fastest for a peak day, though it wouldn't surprise me if you thought your route was faster. So let's have a look at some of the alternatives. How much time do you lose by riding things in a different order? 
Sometimes it's actually quite a bit. Say you do the obvious thing and ride the park's newest roller coaster, Wicker Man, first. After that, you head to Nemesis and Galactica, then Rita and 13, and finally end the day on Oblivion and the Smiler. You'll take 55 minutes, nearly an hour longer, which could be used for another ride on Wicker Man, for example. Here's the additional time for two other routes, one starting with the Smiler and the other with Nemesis. With these, you'll add either 42 minutes or 45 minutes to your route. Hopefully now you're thinking that the Coasterbot approved Alton Towers speedrun route is the way to go. If you do stick to our itinerary on your next visit, do let us know as we'd love to hear if it was successful. The model can do more than just minimizing the total time though. Perhaps you don't mind long queues, but absolutely hate walking between rides, especially up and down the various hills scattered across Alton Towers. Well, we've got you covered. The fastest route around Alton Towers from the entrance begins with a walk to X Sector for the Smiler. You'll then ride Oblivion after, before heading to the Dark Forest to experience 13 first and Rita second. From there, walk towards the entrance, taking a right to head to Wicker Man. Finally, you'll make your way over to the Forbidden Valley for a ride on Nemesis and then Galactica. All in all, that'll take you 35 minutes to walk, 4 minutes faster than the overall route mentioned earlier. Pretty neat, huh? Though, we can actually save even more time. Theme park nerds often go on about how they get to the park excessively early, sometimes more than an hour before the park officially opens. But why? I mean, what's the point? If the gates open at 10, can't you just rock up at 10? Of course not! Alton Towers is a faff. It's a short monorail ride or 10 to 15 minute walk between the car park and the entrance. This means that, to maximize your day, you need to get to the car park with time to spare. Although the park is open from 10, they usually let people through the gates at least 15 minutes early. This means if you're in the plaza before 9.45, you can walk straight into the park and begin to queue for a ride before it opens. So let's run our Python model again, this time with the assumption that you're near the front of the pre-queue as soon as rides start running at 10 a.m. So, let's imagine you're at Alton Towers, waiting in the queue for 13 to open. Your watch hits 10 a.m., 13 opens the guests, and our clock starts. Instantly, you're able to ride 13 after just a short 4-minute queue. That means you're already heading over to Rita at 10.14. After a 6-minute wait, you'll be on board. Then, at 10.30, you'll walk 7 minutes towards Oblivion, which currently has a 12-minute long queue. From there, it's time for Nemesis. Walk 16 minutes from X Sector to the Forbidden Valley and join the queue line at 11.15. After your ride, head over to Galactica and enter that 43-minute queue at 11.51. Now, relax. It's 12.44, which means it's time for some lunch. Don't dilly-dally though, because at 13.39, you'll need to join the 56-minute queue for Wicker Man. To finish the itinerary, walk for 8 minutes from Wicker Man over to the Smiler and join that queue. All in all, you'll be able to ride all 7 of the park's major roller coasters in 6 hours and 8 minutes. By getting to the park early and being in a queue at 10am, you'll be able to ride everything roughly 40 minutes faster, which could be enough time to get an extra ride. So, in that respect, our model confirms that theme park nerds are right. You should get to a park early if you want to maximize your ride time. Though, the best way to maximize the number of roller coasters you'll be able to get on has, and always will be, by visiting on an off-peak day. By arriving early and visiting on an off-peak day, our model suggests that you could ride everything nearly twice as quickly than if you turned up to the park at 10 a.m. on a peak day. That's a saving of over three hours. For your interest, on screen we've created a ride itinerary for all four combinations, so you know what the best route is for your situation. At the end of the day though, these are very vague suggestions on how to visit Alton Towers effectively. Our model is far from perfect. Firstly, it's made using peak and off-peak average queue times for three months worth of data, all from 2021. Who's to say whether those three months are an accurate depiction of the rest of the year or even 2022? To make the model better, and perhaps even more usable, we'd want to know less about the specific time you should be riding a roller coaster and more about the rough order you should be riding them in. If you have any ideas of how we could improve our model, we'd love to hear from you. So there you go, over the past 10 minutes or so, we've seen a whole range of ways to ride all 7 of Alton Tower's major roller coasters the fastest. Did you predict the fastest itinerary? And did you think getting to the park early would make such a big difference? Let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and 
We'll see you all next time.